Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the Bazardist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint. So about a month ago, I asked you guys what kind of fall Halloween related tutorials would you like to see from me? And somebody mentioned a Grim Reaper. I've done a lot of different types of Halloween-esque tutorials, but I haven't done a Grim Reaper one. So I decided, hey, why not? Let's do a Grim Reaper. I'm gonna show you how to make your very own super spooky Grim Reaper holding a huge, scythe ready to take some souls. Hey, grab your brushes and grab your paints and come meet me. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. Yeah. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is take our three quarter inch flat wash brush and we're going to paint this entire canvas black. So I'm just going to dip my brush into some water and then I'm going to go in with some black and then we're gonna paint away. So with the power of editing, I'm going to actually fast forward this part. Be sure to pause this point in the video and proceed to paint your entire canvas black. Now that our canvas is dry, we're gonna go ahead and start to make our Grim Reaper. So I'm gonna start with my number 10 shader brush. I'm gonna wet it with a little bit of water, and then we're gonna dip it into some white. Now, the first thing I wanna start with when doing our Grim Reaper is his scythe. So his scythe is kind of like a big prominent thing about this character. So I'm gonna do that first to make sure we can fully, uh, fully see it in this uh, painting. So we're gonna start towards the top here. I wanna do his scythe that's kind of just leering up right on top of here, and then he's got his entire figure kind of on the bottom of the scythe. So what we're gonna start to do is we're gonna take the shader, and our shader is great because we can use the tip and get very nice crisp lines. So I'm going to start at the left top corner of our canvas and I'm using the tip of my brush. I'm just going to make I'm just going to make a curved line just like so. And I'm going to probably stop it right around here. Don't be too concerned if it's not totally clean. You can always go back in and make little changes and whatnot. So I'm gonna probably make a, a line like this. And then there's a little point, there's like a notch in the Sith. So I'm just gonna paint a little dome like that using the tip of my brush. And then it's gonna continue curving, kind of like so. Curve, 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 curve. So right about there, I think. That's where the tip is gonna be. And then we're gonna move it back up again. Now I'm just gonna move it up like this using the tip. Just make sure it comes nice, nicely to a point. And there's another point in the Sith here that has like a, a very sharp edge to it. So I'm just gonna make a little tiny mark like so, going down. And then I continue moving along, just like so. Okay. So that is how you would make the outline of the Sith, okay? And then all you gotta do is simply fill it in. And if you need to, you can always switch back and forth between some brushes. If you're not quite feeling this brush, you wanna go with your detail round brush, you can totally do that. That's good for now. I'm always going to go back in and add more layers as we go, but I want to continue. Next, we're going to do the actual Grim Reaper face. So our Grim Reaper face is, uh, because we're only using white for this, it's going to have that nice ghostly aspect to it. So that's kind of what we're the image we're going for today. So I'm going to go back in with some white. And I want to start making his hood. So his hood is going to start right around where the notch begins on the scythe here, and I'm just going to I'm probably going to make a line, a slanted line kind of starting there, okay? That's just a marker to let us know that we're going to start here. And using the tip of my brush, I'm going to make a line going around and across like this. Okay? This is going to be the hood of our Grim Reaper, the one part of the hood, okay? And his face is going to be inside here. And then I'm going to work on the other side to complete the hood. 
So, got another one. And it's gonna be coming in kind of like this. Okay. So you can already start to see that our Grim Reaper, his hood is pretty much flowy. It's gonna be kind of drapey too. That's kind of what we're going for. All right, now I'm gonna complete the hood. So he's facing this in this direction. So more of the hood on this side is going to be exposed. So using the tip of our brush, I'm just gonna do kind of uh, like folded lines, kind of like this. So it's like representing the, uh, the flowiness of his hood. And it's gonna go down and kind of cinch into the middle. Just like so. And like that. And what's really nice about this too, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, the fact that it's like all these little lines makes it look even more ghostly and more um, kind of intimidating, right? We're gonna try to connect everything together. So uh, I wanna go to this part now. I wanna work on his shoulder because that's going to tie in with the fabric that's gonna tie into this part. So right around here is where I want to make my line. That's going to be where our shoulder begins. And you can either use the broad side of your brush and bring it down like so, or you can use a tip, up to you. And I'm really using very small uh, little strokes to help me with this part because what I'm going to try to do is bring this in. As you can see, this is going to be where his... Um, his shoulder is and it's showing that flowiness once again of that of that cloak that he's under and the cloak is going to kind of go in like so and then it's going to kind of go in up like this so it's got a flow to it and of course it doesn't all go in one direction this you got some kind of going down like this some kind of going up like that okay this is already looking really spooky. You can already kind of tell what this is, right? Just by looking at it. All the telltale signs, right? So now, we, we have the beginnings of his of his cloak kind of dangling in the wind here. Um, so you can see that we're kind of connecting everything together. So I'm going to take wherever we just worked on over here. And kind of connect some parts of it together. And I want to go too and make the other shoulder here. Because I, I do want to represent the flowiness of that. So because he's looking in this direction, the flow of his shoulders are going to be a little, they're not going to be completely level with this shoulder over here. It's going to kind of be lower. So we're making a line from this shoulder going down diagonally this way. I'll probably make the shoulder right around here. And then it kind of goes down and follows the same kind of direction as the other um, <clears throat> lines that we've done over here. All right, so they all kind of follow the same kind of pattern, right? Now this is looking really cool. All right. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go drag the rest of these lines over. Not all of them have to be dragged over, but just some to make it kind of give you that wispy, ghostly look. Okay, and that's the beauty of this. So I'm gonna bring it down even more, like so. Okay. Yeah, that's so much fun. I love that. You don't hate. It's like you don't have to do very much with this. It just the fact that you're putting this on against a black surface um, it's really working a lot in your favor and that's how easy this stuff can be okay so now um, I want to do beginnings of his chest region so we're gonna start right around here where his where we did his shoulder before and I'm just gonna bring a line coming down like so okay so it's kind of gonna look like this and then Gonna move out this way. Oh, so creepy, right? <laughs> Someone actually suggested this tutorial. That's why I'm putting this out there. Um, I always love your guys' ideas. I think it just makes it so much more fun to to go ahead and make. Okay. So we got we got we got the makings of the beginning of his uh, kind of like robe on the bottom here. I'm just gonna maybe fan it out a little bit more just to kind of help bring this out, right? And there, he's got some sort of belt kind of happening like right around here. I'm not gonna do a whole belt. I just wanna give the uh, the essence of a belt. 
and I'm only just doing that. I'm not carrying the line all the way forward, like the, all the way across like this. I'm just kind of doing it uh, using the broadside of a brush like that. And that just, that does it for me. You know, it's, you're working with shadows. Um, so it just, that does the, just the trick for me. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna work on more of the fabric wrinkles here. So of course, it's a very flowy robe. And of course, some of the stuff that we've done on top of here is gonna connect into here. And it's gonna come a little bit of lines coming up from here, a little bit of lines coming up from here. And I'm kind of going between using the, the tip of my brush and the broad side of my brush and very lightly dragging whatever white paint I have over this. So it's, it you know gives it really that cool ghostly shade that we're looking for, okay? That's how I like to think of it, like ghosts, they're barely there, right? So you want to really ease up on your brush pressure and just take it really easy. And I'm using whatever remains, I'm not even dipping back into my brush here, I'm just taking whatever remains I have on my brush with the white and just kind of making a nice little outline just so it looks like it's kind of uh, illuminated in the darkness and also gives it that uh, ghostly appearance. Okay. It's wonders what you can do with a little bit of paint left on your brush, right? Even that can be art. Okay. I want to work on his arm. And what we're going to do first is we're going to go back to the shoulder and his arm is going to kind of, kind of go down like this, okay? Because he's going to be holding that scythe, that sith, right? It's not just going to be floating in midair. <laughs> Although that would be kind of creepy too. And uh, so I'm going to make a line kind of like this. It's kind of going to curve up at the bottom. Just like so. Okay. And then we're going to make another line at the edge of the paper here. A little higher. It's going to go up like this, okay? Now this line is going to represent the tassel of of his leg like, where his arm is going to come out of his bony bony arms and then that's going to have of course a, fl a flowy kind of like ethereal nature to it so it's going to go up i'm going to maybe make this a little higher and that's okay adjusting is good that's going to be the other part of his arm that's coming out And again, if you felt like you messed up or you know something didn't quite go as, as planned, it's okay. You have you have the black paint still. You can always go back later and fix things up. I'm actually pretty happy with how this came out. Now I want to do where his hand is. So first thing I think I would like to do is to put the scythe um, handle in. So I want to make sure that where it's going to land is going to make sense with our picture here. So I'm going to probably put it right here so where the top part of the, the arm connects and our scythe handle is going to curve up. So again using the, br using the uh, tip of my brush to do the majority of the work for me. And of course this is going to get thicker. And it's going to go all the way to, his, to where his robe is and um, I think I'm going to put it, hmm, do I want to put it behind his robe or in front of it? Yeah, let's put it in front of it. It just looks like he's pass he's actively using it instead of just passively uh, walking around with it. Like he's about to go get somebody's soul. All right. Yeah, this is already looking super creepy. Love it. Now, I want to go and put his arm in. So we're going to start right around here um, where we made the uh, like the sort of the top part of his or not the top part of his arm but like a little downwards so like maybe right around here somewhere so if the top part of his arm is here we're gonna start making the arm right around here so I'm gonna make a line kind of slanted to the left okay doesn't have to be crazy this is just gonna be his bony arm kind of sticking out okay And then we're gonna do his his wrist. So his wrist is kind of gonna be. I'm gonna put a little bit of separation between where his arm ends and where his wrist begins, uh, just to give that skeleton effect. 
So his wrist is kind of it's going to kind of be that shape. And I want to make sure that it it somehow uh, intersects with the the handle of the Sith here. And don't be too concerned if you can't exactly see or you can't exactly see the separation between the Sith and the wrist quite yet. We can we're going to go back in later and fix that. Okay. And then I'm going to do fingers. So one finger comes out this way. Another one comes out this way. Another one comes out this way. So this finger here. It's going to connect it in this way. Okay. So this is just showing you a wrist with fingers kind of uh, extruding out of it. And you can always move to your um, detail round brush if you want to get more of the details in. And then one more thing I want to do is thumb. So his thumb is kind of out this way. Just like so. Okay? That's pretty much it. Just a little, a little line to show where the thumb is. Okay. Alright. So, yeah, sometimes it might look a little funny. Uh, where his his arm is so I can always go back in with my black which I'm gonna do in a second but I'm just gonna fill in the rest here making sure and I want to do some lines coming down this way as well so while that's drying we're gonna move on to the face okay now you can always stop at this point and say hey I'm done you, you know you can kind of get the idea of a, of a Grim Reaper but uh, we're gonna do his face. So I'm gonna move over to my detail round brush. I'm gonna dip it in some water. Water is very crucial here because we want it to be nice and smooth. And so I got my white and I'm gonna start over here. So first things first, I wanna do the top part of the skull, which is gonna be right towards the top here. So I'm just gonna take my brush and make a skull line arc like so. That's it. Okay. And of course, I can always go back in and add more lines on his hood. And then, I'm going to go ahead and add where his eyes are going to be. So, towards the end of the skull part, right over here, I'm going to move down, give a little bit of space, and make a line kind of going up like this, and then a line kind of going in, like so. And then, I'm going to do, we're going to kind of do this outline right here. And once that happens, it's going to go in like so. Or actually out like so, too. Line goes in. And then another line coming out. It's going to go towards the center. And then line going down. So if this doesn't make sense quite yet, you're making the outline of his of the skeleton, his skull, right? So this is going to be the teeth part, and then this goes straight across like so. It goes back up again, and then it comes out. So these are going to be his cheekbones. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I had to do this kind of several times to get to get this right. <coughs> it doesn't quite look like it like it, you want it to yet, but that's okay. So I'm gonna fill this in, and we're gonna go back in with black later to put in the eye sockets. That's the beauty of working with a black background, right? You can always go back in with black later, and fill that part in. And then we got the jaw portion. So the jaw is gonna start right around here. And then it's going to go in, meet up a little further up like that, goes in, goes in, and goes back up again. I know this all looks a little weird right now, but trust me, once you got all the pieces kind of working together, it's really going to look cool. Now there's a little bit of space, black space, right over here. 
and I want to go and put a rib cage. Okay, just the beginnings of a rib cage. So I'm going to make a line coming going down like this, right underneath where the chin is. And then we're going to do lines coming out like this. And then a line coming out like that. Okay, it's very subtle, but it'll do. Then I'm going to go in and add some of my details. So I'm going to wait for this part to dry, but while that's happening, I'm going to go back to my hand here and fix that part up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in with my detail round brush and this time put in my black paint, okay? Because now we're gonna clean up the hand. So ideally I want the hand to be a little bit more angular so I'm gonna start right around here with this hand and make, just fill that in with black. Okay. Make the robe kind of start a little lower. See, isn't it great? You can just use black to pretty much erase all the mistakes, right? And then I'm going to accentuate the joint differences and just thin out the, the arm bone. I want to go back to the fingers up here and this time I want to add in a little line to represent where the bottom of his wrist is on the scythe. And then two lines representing the knuckles of his fingers, as well as the knuckles here on his hand. I want to fix up this arm. And then I can always adjust this with um, the white later on. Now going back to the eyes here, I want to put the eye, eyeball of the skull in. So we're just going to go with black this time. And we're going to start right around here in this area. So we're going to make pretty much a rectangle. So we got a line coming down this way, line coming going in. It's not quite horizontal, it's slightly dipping to the, to the um, bottom right here. Then it kind of goes up this way, and then goes in. So this is kind of giving that appearance of like like an angry eye socket. <laughs> um, and then same on the other end here. Make his eyes. It's got the same shape, uh, except it's just the opposite direction. And we're gonna fill those in. Okay, again. You can always go back in with white later and fix up those parts. You know, we can play with the eyes a little bit. And then we're gonna do his nose, which is just one line kind of going up like this and another line connecting going down like that. And then I'm just gonna take this opportunity now to clean up my white lines. How creepy is this? <laughs> I'm also going to add some details to the scythe handle using my uh, number 10 shader. Congratulations, my queen bees, on making your own super spooky Grim Reaper. Man, looking at it on the camera is even spookier. I'm definitely going to be hanging this up on my wall and possibly scare some trick-or-treaters. Yeah!
If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to give it a like and you subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button, you know what to do, so that you can see more fun, awesome tutorials from me to you in the future. And if you guys didn't know, I actually just started a Patreon account. And if you're not sure what Patreon is, it's a place where creators like me can interact more intimately with their patrons, which could possibly be you. So if you want to become a patron of mine and get access to exclusive patron perks, like additional tutorials and many other cool little tidbits, please be sure to visit my Patreon link in the description below. I really appreciate it. And remember everybody, love yourself and always have fun with your acrylic paint. See you all next time. Bye!